Hey guys, I don't know if you've ever had the experience and, and had to deal with somebody that when you're doing an electrical job they tell you I don't need a meter, I can tell you exactly what the voltage is and next thing you know they proceed to put their finger in there and zzz, they get a little zap and you reach back and say yeah that's 120 volts or zzz, that's, a, that's 24 volts. Well, we're going to get a little bit more precise than that. This is Dan Giles with Let's Fix It. In today's little project, I'm going to show you all the devices that you can use to safely check for electricity and to know what the voltage is before you start your job. So let's get started. Okay, here's just a few simple devices that, that I've got in my little tool bag that, um, depending on what job it is I'm doing, that I, that I actually use. And starting from the simplest little device, one that you just plug into an outlet and another one that's a simple device so where you're just testing to see if you've got voltage or not. It's actually not going to tell you what the voltage is but it will tell you that voltage is present. This is a little 110 volt device that you plug in. It's got little lights on it here that tell you exactly what your, you know, if your grounds are correct, if your wiring's right, if your neutral's in the right place and, and things like that. So I'm going to show you a few little little tips on that. We've got a little analog meter here that actually has a needle and it's, it's got voltage on it. It'll tell you exactly what your voltage is. Let's step up to an amp probe where this is a multimeter. It's going to tell you voltage, ohms, AC, DC voltage as well as amps. I think I said that already. Just by clamping it around one leg of your whatever device you're working on. And then you have another type of a multimeter and this one I use mainly for checking capacitors and, and getting a little bit more in detail. This is also a digital meter. So I'll show you a few of the steps of using those. Okay, well, like I'm saying, this one is, is, is simply a little tester that's going to tell you that voltage is present. And it has an on-off switch in the little handle here. You turn it on. And all you're going to do is put to testing a, to see if you have power is you're just going to put it next to an outlet or in, it's got a little flat deal here, you slip it into an outlet and it's going to make a little noise to tell you that voltage is present. It's also got a little LED indicator that kind of flashes. I'll turn it around here so you can see that better. And that tells you voltage on, voltage off. It's simple, but it could save you from getting a little zap if you're not quite sure and you don't want to bust out one of your other meters. This little tester here for 110 volt circuits, you simply just plug it in. It's got little lights here that light up and tell you what different circuits are doing, what your, well, actually what your particular circuit is. And it'll tell you that if you have two of these little amber colored lights lit, that's telling you that your wiring is correct. You could have one lit on the inside, one on the outside and that tells you that something's crossed, either a neutral's crossed or simple things like that. That's a simple little tester. We'll put that aside. Now your analog meters, and this is like I said a multimeter as well. You're going to put it on AC voltage. And all you're doing with that really is just sticking your little leads inside of the like so. You get a little reading on there. It's going to tell you what your voltage is. And we're right here in the middle at about 120 volts. And that's pretty good. And, you know, it's a, it's a reference to tell you what, a general idea of what your voltage is. Since it's analog, it's really not going to be that precise. But you can pick one of these up for about $20, $25. Simple little device. Save you a lot of headaches later down the line. Then you get into the amp probe, and it is a multimeter as well. I was going to set it on AC volts at about 200 volts maximum on the reading. And there again, you're going to stick this into your outlet, and it's going to tell you exactly what your voltage is on this one. We're at 121.5. Like I said, if you were doing amps with this, you would set this on what your general range of amps for a particular product that you're working on. So like if you were working on a water heater and you wanted to test the amperage going to an element, average 
amperage on that would be somewhere around 18, 19 amps. You could put it on 20. Stick one leg into this and it will read amps and tell you exactly what that's drawing when it's on. And this meter here is another multimeter. Like I said earlier, I use this one mainly for checking capacitors. I have an MFD readings here. And it's just about as same principle as, as this meter here. Okay, what I've done here is with this is a field piece LT17A meter, and like I said, I use this mainly for testing capacitors. And I've pulled one of my capacitors off the shelf. It's actually a 7.5 370 volt capacitor. And I've got this set at 200 MFD. Because it's a small MFD capacitor, I just want to set it on the smallest rating that I can to get more of an accurate reading. And simply by touching the leads onto the contacts of the capacitor, I see that this one is rating at 6.1, 6.2 MFDs. And like I said, it is a 7.5, but it's been sitting on a shelf and it, it comes down a little bit on the shelf. But it's within normal ranges when we use this capacitor. So I'll put that on the side. We'll grab a, a larger MFD. Pull one out of the box here. This is going to be a dual section round capacitor. It's a 35.5 MFD. And on the top, this is the, well actually, yeah, 35.5. This is the fan, and we have a common, and then this one also goes to the hermetic part, or the compressor part. So this is going to be a 35, 5, 35 MFDs, and this one will be 5. And what we're going to do, we'll test from the 5 to the common, and we get a reading of 4.1 so that one is in normal range and then we're going to go over here to the compressor side I'll turn it around so that and see down inside of here it says hermetic which is the compressor and we'll put a lead on that and then we'll put it on the common and we'll step this up just a little bit I'm sorry, that was fan. We'll put it on here. And this is going to give us off the shelf, sitting for a little while, at 28 MFDs. And that's how you would test a capacitor with this particular meter that has MFD testing capabilities. Okay, so what I've shown you here is, is little devices that you can buy anywhere starting from $10 on up to, I think the most expensive one I've got in my arsenal is somewhere around $200. So there's a wide range and varieties that you can choose from. If you're doing just simple electrical work, you, the little analog meter will be perfect for you. It will save you from having to go to a breaker and zzz, get and zap just so you can figure out if there's power or not. Or if you're pulling an outlet and you touch one of the legs on the hot side of that outlet, you know. It's just not safe, not safe at all. So spend a little bit of money, buy you a decent little meter, save yourself some trouble and, and from getting hit by that voltage, and test it safely and correctly and know exactly what you've got. All right, so we talked about all these meters. You go out and get you one. I would suggest getting a decent one, one that you figure you're going to have for a while. The better ones are going to last a long time. They all take batteries, so you want to be sure to, to take note of which type of battery it takes and have a spare on hand. And, you know, like I said, get you a good one. You can get these little cheap ones, you know, $20, $25. It's going to be, it'll be a good meter to have around the house and, and just for testing things on, you know, once or twice a month you might be changing an outlet or a switch or something like that. That's fine. So, I, I would just suggest getting something decent so you don't have any problems with it later down the line. Something that's going to be reliable to you. Until next time, this is Dan Giles with Let's Fix It. We'll see you soon.